So there are a couple of imitation Brunswick stew canning recipes on YouTube, but they're not the real thing. Today, we're gonna to do the real thing from a Georgia girl. We're gonna make some real Georgia Brunswick stew. So I'm sorry to all you people of Virginia who wanna put butter beans in it. Butter beans don't go in Brunswick stew. And to all you people who think Brunswick stew is really just a dressed up gumbo, there's no okra in Brunswick stew either. So we're gonna make the perfect, real Brunswick stew today. Welcome to Girl Preserve. I'm Carter and I'm thrilled you're here. Let's get started. First, I wanna tell you that I have one and a half medium onions diced up. I diced up two jalapenos. I took out the seeds and the ribs. I didn't want it too hot, but those in there. And then four or five large cloves of garlic. I diced up, I just sauteed them to soften. So I have one, this was a huge potato. I mean, just a ridiculously big potato. So I'm just doing one. Ordinarily, I would do two medium potatoes, but I'm gonna do one and I'm gonna blanch this for maybe three minutes and then rinse it in some water just to get the starch off because I don't want all that starch in my finished product. So I'm gonna dump this in the hot, I have hot salted water back here. We're gonna dump that in and then we're gonna start filling the bowl. All right, we'll let that go for just a couple of minutes. Let me show you what else I have. We had pulled pork last night, so I put it in the fridge so I could chop it up. And I prefer actually to chop mine up rather than to pull it apart with a fork if I'm gonna can it, because it will continue to cook a little bit and I don't want it to disintegrate. I want it to still have the meaty, the meaty feel. So this is exactly four pounds, give or take. You can change it up, whatever. I am trying to do eight pints today. So we'll see if I could get eight pints. In fact, I'd like to do eight pints plus tonight's dinner. So we'll see. I have four pounds of pork. So the traditional Southern Georgia recipe is made with pork and chicken these days. It used to be made with all kinds of other meats. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, but today, Pork and chicken is traditional. If you don't have pork or you don't eat pork, you know, chuck, chuck um, beef chuck is just fine. You know, cook it up like you would a pot roast so it's very tender and then dice it up and that's perfect. I'm just using some chicken that I canned and I have juices in there. So I'm gonna pour the juices out and then I'm gonna chop up this chicken a little bit. So this will be, I'm gonna use two pints of home canned chicken. So that's almost two pounds of chicken. Really kind of what a two to one with your pork to your chicken. See that comes out just perfectly. Put that in there. I'm gonna do one more jar. I'm gonna show you a little trick if you don't already know it. I like to, these lids, you know, you only use them once when you're canning, but I like to use them um, on dry goods in the pantry, the, but I don't want to use a new lid. So I have hand sanitizer. So we all have plenty of hand sanitizer. It takes the marker right off the top. So then you don't, you're not looking at a jar of oregano and it says chicken from May 2022, right? There you go, completely clean. All right, take that off. Dump the chicken broth in here. Dice this up. If you haven't home canned your own chicken, it is so worth it. The quality is wonderful. If you don't have home canned chicken, you can uh, put a, probably four chicken breasts in an Instant Pot, or you can use canned chicken from uh, the store. That'll be fine too. But if you have it that you've home canned, that's the best. I would check out those potatoes. Okay, 
more minutes on those. I don't want to completely cook them. I just want to par cook them and then rinse them off. I just don't want the starch. So that's all I'm doing there. Now I'm going to take 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and we're going to put that in here. stuff not in your room. This is just some leftover tomatoes from some I can the other day. So I'm just gonna throw that in too. I put about a pound of corn. This is frozen corn. It's just fine. You can use fresh if you have it. Don't know that I would use canned for something that we're gonna recan. It might get a little mushy at the end. Frozen corn's just fine. So that was about a pound. I can get my mess out of the way. I'm gonna put a little Worcestershire sauce. I'll write these directions down below. So no need to worry. A little Worcestershire sauce. A little liquid smoke. This is, I just finished a video on this. This is homemade barbecue sauce. It is so good. So I should, I should have posted that before I post this. So I'll link it up above. Make sure you go take a look at this recipe. We're gonna need a pint of barbecue sauce. If you don't have any homemade, that's fine. You can use a, a bottled barbecue sauce from the store or you can use whatever barbecue sauce you use at home. I want to make sure it has a heavy vinegar base. I need a, I need a knife, hang on. All right, I'm gonna get my potatoes off the stove. cold water on those. Stop the cooking and wash off any starch. right in. Now, this is some leftover tomato paste from the barbecue sauce I made on camera this morning. Use that. I'm probably going to use some more in a bit. I'll leave that. broth if you want. I use chicken broth. It's just the way I've always made it. This is my own recipe. I've been making this for nearly 40 years, which is kind of shocking to say, but it's true. So I don't want this to be a soup. I saw somebody on the internet turned it into a soup. It's not a soup. It's not meant to be a soup. It's a stew. It's a very hearty stew. some diced tomatoes in here. I'm 
juice and all. I do have some extra barbecue sauce if we decide we want to use that. Can you see that? A little bit. You'll see it better when I bring it to the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and add the other half pint of barbecue sauce. some pints. You might want to can it in quarts, which is just fine too. I'll give you the time for that when we get there. I like it in pints though because it's a complete meal. I don't have to do anything else to it. So if my husband gets hungry and I'm not home to make dinner or don't want to have dinner, he can just grab a jar, heat it up, and it's good to go. So I like to keep it in individual serving size jars. All right, I'm going to move this to the stove and I'll bring you with me. All right, I'm going to bring you over here so you can see how we're doing. So there we go. Now, I'm going to heat this up until it is heated all the way through. Just taking a little taste test and I'm going to add some salt and some pepper and some more tomato paste. maybe half a teaspoon of pepper. Maybe a teaspoon of salt. Let's get some more tomato paste in there. As I said, I will write all of these directions down below. Full recipe instead of my bits and bobs here. nice and thick, exactly the way it should be. So I want the corn to heat up because it went in frozen. I want the potatoes to heat all the way through. And then we'll jar it up. And if it were a soup, we would only pressure down for 60 minutes, but it's not a soup as I told you. So it is heavy on the meat, so I'm gonna use a meat time. Uh, which is what I've always done with it. So because I'm using pints, I'm going to do 75 minutes. If you're doing it in quarts, you do it for 90 minutes. It's just a few minutes. I think I'm going to have some left for dinner tonight. That's good news. I'm going to add a little more chicken broth. We're just gonna go for the rest of the tomato paste here. Now, if my can are heating up, with my jars, I'm gonna do a hot can or hot jars and hot Brunswick stew. story. This Brunswick stew is so good that it survived divorce. So I had been divorced from my first husband 
or several years, maybe five or six years. And his wife emailed me and asked me for the recipe for the Brunswick stew. So there you go. Can't be too bad. All right, a little more Worcestershire. Isn't that pretty? Maybe pretty is not the right word, but it sure looks delicious. Go take a taste. Potatoes are not cooked yet, so I'm not gonna taste the potatoes. All right, I'm gonna let this heat up for a while. It is not there yet. And um, as it heats up, I'll bring you back and we'll get it jarred up. All right, so let me catch you up because I got carried away and forgot to turn on the camera. So I added two teaspoons of smoked paprika and I added one more teaspoon of salt. So this is heated through, it's good to go. I'm gonna take out my hot jars and we're gonna start canning it up. definitely gonna have enough for dinner so I'm very excited Just warning you now. We have a one inch head space. It's about perfect. almost as good cold out of the jar as it is heated through. So I have taken it on road trips before and just eaten it with a spoon out of the jar rather than stop at McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever. Another good reason to have it in single serving size jars. Rims cleaned up and we'll get them into the camera. Just do a quick debubbling here. Hot 
jars. on until it catches and get it on that and then just a smidge further there we go okay you see that beautiful you can see the corn the potatoes you can see the jalapenos the chicken the pork tomatoes very excited about this all right i'm going to get these in so i saw one person online say that you couldn't cam Brunswick stew, unless you turned it into a soup. So I went to the National Center for Home Preservation because I've done this for years. And what they said was, because there are so many different recipes for Brunswick stew, because they haven't tried mine yet, uh, because there's so many different recipes that they couldn't try them all. So they haven't tried any. So it's not that it can't be canned. Although I'm not sure how the okra would fare in it, but okra doesn't belong in Brunswick stew anyway. So. So we'll just leave it at that. I'm kind of kidding. Kind of not kidding, but kind of kidding. For those of you who've never had Brunswick stew, know how to describe it except that it's like a stew you would get at a barbecue joint. And in the south, in Georgia, I'm in Tennessee now, but in Georgia, typically have it as a side dish to barbecue along with some coleslaw. But also sold by the bowl. You can just have it for dinner, which is what we're going to do. Heavy on the meat, plenty of vegetables in the tomatoes, a little bit of corn, onions, potatoes, just about the perfect meal. All right. So I could probably do another six pints out of this. So if I had a double stack canner, I'd be doing six more pints and we'd be skipping it for dinner. I'd rather have it on the shelf and uh, eat it all tonight, but I don't. So we're going to have dinner tonight and lunch tomorrow and probably another meal. Okay, so I have all 10 jars in the canner. I'm going to close this up, lock it up, and oops, hot. Wait for steam to come out of here. We're going to let it blow steam. Let me bring it over here. Not too far away. We're gonna let the canner blow steam for 10 minutes. And I mean really blow steam out of here for 10 minutes. And then when that 10 minutes is up, I'm gonna put on my weight. This is, a, you have a five pound, 10 pound and 15 pound option. 
I am below 1,000 feet above sea level, so I use a 10 pound option. If you're above 1,000 feet above sea level, you use the 15 pound option. And I don't know if anybody uses the five pound. So make sure you double check that. So 10 pounds of pressure below 1,000 feet above sea level, 15 above that. Okay, so once I put my weight on and it, once I put my weight on and it comes up to temperature, I'm gonna let it go for 75 minutes because I'm doing pints. If you did yours in quarts, I'm kind of jealous. I almost wish I had now, but you would do those for 90 minutes. So I'll see you back here when it's done. Okay, our Brunswick stew is done. So we had uh, part of the leftovers for dinner tonight. And it occurred to me that I don't think I mentioned if you're going to do the same thing, when you put the Brunswick stew in the jars, the potatoes are not cooked, they're only parboiled. So if you're gonna have leftovers for dinner out of the pot, you need to finish cooking and make sure that those potatoes are cooked. So depending how much Brunswick stew you have left in there and how big your potato chunks are, I would say anywhere from 30 minutes to maybe as long as an hour, but probably 30 to 45 minutes, it needs to continue to cook on a gentle boil uh, with a lid at least mostly on to get those potatoes cooked. But anyway, we had it tonight. It was delicious. I have, uh, I have some in the refrigerator for tomorrow's lunch, and then I put some in the freezer. It freezes exceptionally well. So I put some in the freezer and we'll, we'll pull that out some cold rainy day, and that's what we'll have. Okay, let's get these out. 10 jars. Ooh, they look gorgeous. See all the corn and the potatoes and the pork and the chicken in there? Okay, so we're gonna finish up for today. I hope that you will make this. If you've never had Brunswick stew, let me know down below. I would love for you to make it and get your feedback on it because it's fantastic. I just, I don't know how anybody could not like Brunswick stew. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna link the barbecue sauce uh, video, I think, I think right up there. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.